Hola, kids. It's Mr. Worthen here. Um, on day one, you learned about systems of equations. And we graphed both equations, saw where they intersected, and that point was the point that would solve both of those equations. Well, unfortunately, graphing isn't always friendly. Sometimes they will intersect at not happy points. And other times, the numbers get so huge, it's not fun to graph. So we're going to have a couple of algebraic ways to solve these bad boys as well. And your first one is called substitution. Oops, sorry. And substitution is a, it's a pretty complicated little process. And so we're going to have a training wheels day today. And today just kind of gets us set up for real substitution tomorrow. This is kind of like a baby step for substitution. But when we do substitution, our first step will be to isolate either x or y. For this first set of problems, we're going to practice just getting x by itself. Now, you've isolated for y a lot. When we were doing all our graphing y equals mx plus b, you practiced that. Well, now I'm going to have options. I could get x by itself or y by itself. And because there's an option, you can be smart and make life easy, or you can not be smart and make life hard. So I'm going to practice a few of these. If I'm trying to get x by itself in this first problem, I have to get rid of the 2y, subtract 2y from both sides. Heck, that wasn't hard. Negative 2y plus 12. Again, if you wanted to, you could write it as 12 minus 2y either way. I don't care. But that would be isolating for x in that first problem. Well, that was pretty easy. Not always going to be that easy. Let's go check this next one. Now I've got to get rid of a negative 8 and a 1 -fifth y. Since the 1 -fifth y is connected with addition and subtraction, I'm going to get rid of that first. So minus 1 -fifth y from both sides. Negative 8x equals negative 1 -fifth y minus 16. Well, x is still not by itself. This negative 8 has got to go bye bye It's connected with multiplication, so I'm going to divide by negative 8, divide by negative 8, divide by negative 8. And now this isn't very friendly. So i got to do one th negative 1 fifth divided by negative 8, so I know it's going to be positive. Going off to the side, 1 fifth divided by 8 is the same as 1 fifth times 1 over 8, which ends up being 1 over 40. So this ends up being 1 over 40 y. Negative 16 divided by negative 8 is positive 2. Yikes. X is by itself, but that wasn't very friendly or fun. And that's what I'm trying to show you. There are times when getting X by itself might be easy, and other times when it might be hard. Take a second and practice those next two. I'll throw answers up. Hit pause. Actually do them. See if you're doing it right. If you hit pause and practiced, you should have gotten x equals y minus 9 and x equals negative 6y plus 12. All right, well, let's practice this by getting y by itself. So if you look, these are the same equations, and I'm just trying to see, hey, sometimes getting x by itself is easy, other times getting y by itself is easier. So if I'm taking this first equation and I'm trying to get y by itself, i got to get rid of the x and the 2. I'm going to get rid of the x first, minus x. Hang on, let me get rid of that so you don't think I'm dividing. Minus x, minus x. Okay. 2y equals negative x plus 12. I can't combine those because they're not like terms. 
Now I got to divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, and I end up with y equals negative one half, there's really one there, x plus six. So my point to you was if you looked at these two problems, this one problem, and I had the option to get x or y by itself, I would say getting x by itself was way easier and had way more friendly numbers. I didn't have a fraction when I got x by itself, but I did have fractions when I got y by itself. So again, our point, when we put all this stuff together in day three, work smarter, not harder. Make a good choice about who to isolate. Um, number four, this is just an ugly problem altogether, but if I'm trying to get y by itself, I'm going to add 8x, 1 fifth y equals 8x minus 16. I got to multiply by 5 over 1. Remember, that means I got to multiply everybody over here by 5 over 1. 5 over 1 is really just 5, so I guess I don't need that. Distribute, and y equals 40x minus 80. So getting y by itself was probably a little bit easier than getting x by itself in this problem. Had more friendly numbers and it wasn't as nasty. Go ahead and get y by itself for c and d. So if you isolated y by its or isolated y for c and d, you ended up with y equals negative x minus 9. I would argue that both a and c were a pretty equivalent. So there wasn't a really good choice in terms of should I get x by itself or should I get y by itself. And right now, I'm telling you who to isolate for, but on day three, you're going to have to make that choice. And we need to have a feel for when it's easier to get x or y by itself. Uh, when you looked at d, we got y equals negative 1 sixth x plus 2. Uh, not very pretty. I, I would argue getting x by itself in this case was better. All right, that being said, now let's start to play with substitution. And again, I'm calling this kind of a, a training wheels day because in all of these problems, I am giving you one of the two answers. One of the two variables, I am telling you what his value is. And when you do day three, that's not going to be the case. So what substitution means is, this statement says that x equals six. x and six are the same. We could trade. If I had x and you had six, we could trade and that would be a fair trade. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the value of x and substitute it into the other equation. So now I'm gonna say y equals two times six minus three, y equals 12 minus three, y equals nine. And now I know the point where these two lines intersected was at six comma nine, and that would be my final answer. Realistically, that this is the last step of the bigger problem you're going to play with on day three. And, ooh, where are we going? Sorry. And this was the first step. So tomorrow we're going to put all of it together, and you'll see how it all fits. On number six, I'm not playing with X and Y. I'm playing with M and N but they're just variables, it shouldn't matter to me. Since I know that n equals one-fifth, I'm gonna take that value and plug it into the other equation, and I get 5m plus 10 times, substituting for the n, one-fifth equals zero, and now I'm solving. 5m plus 10 times one-fifth is just two. Now I got to get m by itself. 
minus 2. 5m equals negative 2. Divide by 5, divide by 5. And I get m equals negative 2 fifths. If I was writing my answer as a point, we'd have negative 2 fifths, comma, 1 fifth. And if you think back to day one, when we were graphing, these two lines, 1, 2, would intersect at a really unfriendly point, and I would be guessing as to what that answer was. So now that we know how to do this algebraically, it's going to make life a little bit easier when we get to messy or big numbers. Go ahead and play with E and F. Practice it. Hit pause. See if you're doing it right. If you substituted correctly and then solved for A, we should have gotten 14 and then the B was one half. I didn't mention this on M and N over here, but how did I know which order to put these in? Generally, we will say put them in alphabetical order. Since X comes before Y, we put X first and Y second. So since M comes before N, we put M first and N second. Since A comes before B, we put A first and B second. Likewise, when I substituted the three into the Y, I should have gotten zero for my X value. And the point where these two lines would intersect is zero, three. All right, kids, that's the beginning step of substitution. When you go to your homework tomorrow in class, we'll practice getting X by itself, then practice getting Y by itself, and then we'll come right back to substituting if you know one of your values. Um, today shouldn't seem horribly difficult. Getting X and Y by itself might be tough because some of us are still struggling with that. It's good practice. But once you know one of your variables plugging into the other equation, that shouldn't be too bad for us. I'm going to warn you that you better watch day three video closely. It's putting all this stuff together is a little bit feisty, so be aware. Enjoy, kids. Have a great day. Bye-bye.